Hi again everyone. In this video our objective is to use table I to identify exothermic and endothermic chemical reactions. So let's start out by defining them. An exothermic chemical reaction is a reaction whereby the reactants, typically written on the left, lose energy. This energy is thereby absorbed by a substance or substances adjacent to the reactants. All right, so whatever is nearby will be what has to absorb the energy. It has to go somewhere. So the reactants end up with less energy than they started with. Now, we could actually write that like this. This is a symbolic representation of what a chemical equation for an exothermic chemical reaction would look like. So here's substance AX combining with substance B, yielding BX and A. And this had a certain amount of energy, but in order to become these products, they had to lose the energy. So this energy needs to be identified as being lost, and typically there would be some type of quantity uh, with a unit here to identify not only the amount, but in what units the energy is being expressed. So let's take a look at the definition for endothermic. All right, an endothermic chemical reaction, unlike an exothermic, is a reaction whereby the reactants absorb energy. This energy, this energy is thereby taken by a substance or substances adjacent to the reactant. So whatever is in the immediate environment will lose energy to that substance. So the reactants end up with more energy than they started with, and it could be identified such as this. So here we have energy being added to substance AB. So AB is now absorbing this energy to become uh, yielding substance A plus B. So let's think for a moment of a common example that you may not be aware of, and that's just putting water in a freezer. So the water that you are putting in a freezer is H2O, and it's liquid. When you put it in the freezer, our goal is for it to become H2O solid. So what is occurring here? Is the water that you're putting in the freezer absorbing energy or is it losing energy? And it is in fact losing energy. So we would write over here the amount of energy that it is losing. Now what is it losing the energy to? And it's losing it to the immediate environment within the freezer. So keep that in mind when you put water in the freezer, that you might actually be lowering or raising the temperature and the immediate, um, or the items in the freezer might in fact get a little bit warmer. But not to worry, it's usually very minor. So let's take a look at table I. All right, so here is table I. And it is identified as heats of reactions at 101.3 kilopascal, a measure of pressure, and 298 Kelvin, a measure of temperature. So all of these reactions that you see here are occurring at this pressure and that, <coughs> excuse me, and that temperature. So here are the reactions. This is delta H. Delta H means the change in temperature. And we have to look at this item below. This item below says that a minus sign in front of the delta H indicates an exothermic reaction. So for any of these here, we could identify if it's an exothermic or endothermic reaction. So here at negative 890.4 kilojoules, that's the units, it is going to lose this amount of energy. So my question to you, what side of the equation do we write it on? Do we write it on this, uh, the side that I'm noting as x or y? Actually, I should do this. I should use r and p. What do you think that's indicating? Reactant or product side. All right, so this negative eight, 890.4, where should you write it? It's in, what does it say again? Negative sign is it say? Minus sign indicates exothermic. So, on what side should it be? 
The answer is on the product side. It's exothermic, so it is being removed. It has to be free to go to the environment. But we don't write it as negative 890.4. That's just the change in, in uh, temperature. It would just be 890.4 kilojoules written on this side of the equation. So for that matter, for this one right here, would this 3,351 be written on the reactant side or the product side? The answer, sorry, a P. The answer, the product side. Now what about this one down here? Which side would you write that? And the answer, this uh, 52.4 would be written on this side because it is endothermic. And that brings me to this. If you have two definitions you need to remember, and they are direct opposites of each other, consider this. Only remember one. Stuff that one in your head. The one that's easier. For me, it's exothermic. It's easier for me to remember exothermic. Thereby, I don't have to remember endothermic because it must be the opposite. Now, I want to give one other example on this next slide and then we'll be done. Imagine you had an ice cube in your hand. All right, the concept of endothermic and exothermic tends to be a little bit confusing because of that. See, your hand is the environment. If you have an ice cube, H2O solid, in your hand, you have to consider it is now going to start melting because your hand is warmer. So the water itself, the ice, the solid water, will be absorbing energy from your hand. So from the perspective of the ice, it's endothermic. But what about the perspective from your hand? Your hand was, let's give it a value of... Um, what temperature? Let's just say 87 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now your hand was 87 degrees Fahrenheit. The ice cube was in your hand. The ice cube will be absorbing energy from your hand. So the temperature at your hand will drop. Let's just say it drops to 87 degrees, I'm sorry, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the signal gets sent to your brain. Hey, this is cold. But from the perspective of your hand, it is losing energy. Your hand at this moment is endothermic. So put this together. Wherever there is an endothermic reaction from the perspective of one substance, there has to be an exothermic reaction from the perspective of the adjacent substance. Consider that.